Good morning, church. Come on, stand to your feet. Let's sing together. I'll praise in the valley, praise on the mountain. I'll praise when I'm sure. I'll praise when I'm doubting. Come on, sing it. I'll praise when I'm numbered. Praise when surrounded. Cause praise is the water my enemies drown in. Lift your voice. As long as I'm breathing, I've got a reason to praise the Lord of my soul. Sing it out. Praise. Praise when I don't, yes I will. I praise cause I know you're still in control. I praise is a weapon, it's more than a sound. My praise is a shout that brings Jericho down. Lift your voice, church. As long as I'm breathing, I've got a reason to praise the Lord of my soul. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord of my soul. Oh, I won't be quiet. My God is alive. So how could I keep it inside? Sovereign, praise cause you reign, praise cause you rose and defeated the grave. I'll praise cause you're faithful, praise cause you're true, and praise cause there's nobody greater than you. I'll praise cause you'll suck, come on, praise cause you reign, praise cause you rose and defeated the grave. I'll praise cause you're faithful, praise cause you're true, praise cause there's nobody greater than you. somebody to the house of God this morning. Amen. You can come welcome the kids in for worship. You can welcome the teens. You can welcome somebody near you. You can just wave at them. Say if you had your coffee, two thumbs up. If you've had more than two cups of coffee, two thumbs up. I've had more than two. My thumbs are up. All right. You can be seated in the presence of the Lord. We're excited today is a fifth Sunday, and so our kids' church normally joins us for our worship time, and we're excited that uh, that they are in here with us and gives them an opportunity to uh, show us how things should be done. Amen. Hallelujah. Sometimes when we get older, we kind of slow down. We don't worship with energy and enthusiasm. Hey, Dad, she's right there. Ain't that awesome? I love that. That is awesome. Amen. Hallelujah. It makes me think of when my kids were, were little and Twyla and I used to have to 
change places. Like she would do her part and I would be holding the baby and then we'd switch and then I'd do my part. Amen. That was that was fun days. Fun days, what they would say. Hey dad, hey, what's going on? Great stuff. But tonight, from four to six, is our fall palooza. Amen. Amen. Stand up, stand up, Pastor Twyla, Pastor Sky. These are who's gonna be leading that tonight. Amen. So uh they have worked hard, and uh, some of us were here Friday and staged, but we could still use some more help. Or if you have signed up to serve one of the stations, uh, please be here at 3 o'clock. We've moved most of the stuff inside uh, because of the weather. We realize it's, it's, uh, it's nasty out. We realize it's cold and rainy and, and all of that. And like I said last week, we have two seasons in Oklahoma, summer and winter. It's the only two things we have. We, you know, uh, we don't we don't have a spring. We don't have a fall. Um, you know, you 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 cut your grass from March to November, and uh, and I still got to give mine one more go round. But it's been raining all week, so I haven't been able to do that. But uh, tonight is a very important night. It gives us an opportunity to be a blessing to our community. It gives us an opportunity to show the light and love and life of Jesus to our community, but also gives us an opportunity to bless the precious kids of our community and just give them a, a safe, fun environment where they can still get candy and uh, enjoy themselves. So I, I know that it, um, there might be a little different than what we had planned because we had some outside stuff we were really looking forward to, but whatever it needs to be, come out, uh, seniors, uh, meaning senior adults, senior citizens, whatever you call yourself, uh, young at heart, whatever, come out, come through. Uh, there's uh, going to be, say the cake. Fresh blood chest cake. And, and uh, hot chocolate. <laughs> I have an interpreter. <laughs> um, the Hispanic Church of God will be here with us, Pastor JR and all of them. And so we're so excited that they'll be here as well. And I'm excited um, to try this cake. I mean, I know I've had it before. It's so good. So good. That's just like the Holy Spirit. He's so good. You know? And so come on out. Be a, be a part of that. Amen. You've, you've helped make it possible. All the candy you brought, a couple thousand pieces of candy and all of those kinds of things. And those of you that have donated to buy candy, you know, thank you. And all the workers, thank you in advance. It's going to be a good time. Amen. We're going to receive our offering at this time, which is an unusual opportunity this month. It's the fifth Sunday. We don't always have five uh, Sundays. So this is an opportunity for you to give unto the Lord, to tithe, to give an offering. If you want to give to Kids Church today or you want to give to youth, that'd be great. Or if you want to give to the general fund, however God would speak to you or lay on your heart, to be a blessing to our church. Just don't miss this opportunity to give. Amen. You can do it right now here in person. Write a check if you got checks. Most people don't anymore. Cash. But uh, if not, you can give online. The web address is there. The phone number is there for text to give. God will bless you. So, Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to worship you in giving. God, we're thankful for your many blessings, and we're thankful for the kids and the kids' ministry, and we're thankful for this opportunity to have an outreach tonight. Whatever the weather is or whatever takes place, God, we want to shine the light and life and love of Jesus. Just anoint us and bless us. And also, God, minister today to every person that's in this room. Pour out your blessing and your presence upon them. Let them know that you see them and see what they're facing. We just thank and praise you for it in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Let's stand and keep on worshiping, church.
church, take a minute, close your eyes, lift your hands up. Let's sing with all creation, God, you are holy. You are holy, Lord. We sing with all of heaven, Lord. You are holy. We thank you, Father. Christ is my firm foundation, the rock on which I stand. When everything around me is shaken, and I've never been more glad that I put my faith in Jesus, because he's never let me down. He's faithful through generations, so why would he fail now? He won't. He won't. And I've got joy in chaos. I've got peace that makes no sense, so I won't
Christ is my firm foundation, the rock on which I stand when everything around me is shaking. And I've never been more glad that I put my faith in Jesus, because he's never let me down. He's faithful through generations. So why would he fail now? He won't. He won't. He won't God is good. We serve such a big and mighty God. I love these moments because he's in this room. He's, he's sitting in this room and he's, he's dancing over our praises as we sing about him and to take advantage of this time. Let's just sit for a moment and let's just think about the goodness and the love of God for us. If you don't know that, if you don't know he loves you so much. He's a good, good father. He's not angry with you. He's not mad at you. He just wants to spend time with you. So he's here. Take this moment and worship him. We thank you, Father. Here I stand before you now As honestly as I know Broken by the days gone by Spirit help my soul to But still I fail And even then you're with me there You remind 
Remind me I'm a child of God Regardless of the things I've done My hope is found in perfect Your mercy it triumphs over judgment, love wider than horizons, it's stronger than all sin. Lord, Say that it's impossible to ever save a sinner's soul. But my God says to the prodigal, my beloved one, you welcome home. home.
you, can you just give God praise that mercy has triumphed over judgment? Hallelujah. Come on, you can do better than that. I know you don't want to interrupt the, the worship team, but are you thankful that mercy has triumphed over judgment? I said, are you thankful that the goodness of God, the kindness of God, the long-suffering of God has brought us to the place of repentance? Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Give him praise once again. Thank you, praise team. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Twyla, Pastor Sky, kids, for coming in, your team. Can you just give them another hand as they go out? Amen. Amen. You know what? I let you sit down. I'm going to make you stand back up. Just call me Pastor Austin. <laughs> stand back up. We're going to stand up for the word. I'm trying to, trying to make this adjustment. I, I feel that uh, what Pastor Austin has brought to the table and the importance of standing for the word, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to start doing that. And I... And I forgot today. I was going to have you keep standing, and I forgot. Sorry about that. We do want you to stand for the reading of the Word because it's important. I didn't plan on preaching a second uh, message on this, but all this week with the rain and the cold and the Holy Spirit just kept dealing with me, and so I've added a couple of verses, but we're going to move through them quickly. The first uh, slide, Genesis 1-1, Genesis 8-22, and Ecclesiastes 3-1. In the beginning, God created the heavens, and the earth. While the earth remains seed time and harvest, cold and heat, winter and summer, day and night shall not cease. To everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven. And then in Daniel 2, 20 through 22, Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever, for wisdom and might are His, and He changes. Times and seasons, He removes kings, raises up kings, He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to those who have understanding. He reveals deep and secret things. He knows what is in the darkness, and light dwells with Him. And then I'm just going to read Verses 6 and 7 of Acts 1. Therefore, when he had come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? And he said to them, it's not for you to know the times or seasons which the Father has put under his own authority. Father, we just give you thanks and praise for the word. And God, we just ask that by your spirit, you would give us all the understanding of what you want us to have today, that we would receive it and that we would keep it and that we would walk it out. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. God created, that word is bara, and he changes, that word is shana, the times and seasons as ordered or needed. I'm using some Hebrew and Greek words here. God created, right, to create, to build, to give birth, to be created, meaning new things or fresh things, to revive, to recover. God created. I want everybody to get this. God created. Amen? The devil has no creative power. The devil is not a creator. Only God is a creator. And as we have been created in his image and in his likeness, he's given us that ability and imagination that we can create. But hear this. God created. He created the heavens and the earth, and he's the one that set it all in order. But he also has the authority, his own authority. He doesn't need anybody's permission to change times and seasons, those that he has ordered or as needed. And like Ecclesiastes says, there's, there's a time for everything. There's a time to be born, a time to die, a, a, a time to uh, 
embrace, a time to refrain from embracing. There's, there's a time to gather stones, he says, a time to cast away stones. There's, there's a time for sorrow. There's a time for joy. There's a time for everything. So, so God has ordered the seasons, you know, I jokingly say that Oklahoma doesn't have four, but God has ordered the seasons, but he also changes them not because of creative order, but because he chooses when the season needs to change. And, and he does that. He, he alters it. He changes it. He, he brings us into a different, or the Hebrew word that I really like is other. Other seasons. Your life is not one season. Your life is not one static from the time you're, you're born to the end. No, your life is dynamic. You have mountains and valleys. You have curves. You, there are all kinds of things in your life. There are times and seasons. There's a season to be in school. There's a season to be out of school. Hallelujah. You know what I mean? All of that kind of stuff. There's, there's these seasons, and he changes them. And I want you to be reminded of this slide from last week that that chronos is that chronological time, and kairos is that time within time when, when God steps in, kind of like when, when Paul wrote in Galatians, in the fullness of time, God sent forth his son. So, so there's this time within time that God has predetermined on his clock, on his calendar. They're not governed by the natural seasons. They're governed by a spiritual purpose, and he steps in, and he does that for you and I. He, he does these things, and that's really what I'm wanting to get to in this message. And so I'm going to pick up where I ended last week. And so I am just put this in yellow so you can kind of look at it. Whether you agree with me or not, there's a change of season taking place. Now, when I stood on this platform and behind this pulpit last week, it didn't look like it. So I guess you could say now I'm not just a pastor, I'm a prophet. You can laugh. That was funny. It was meant to be funny. Maybe it didn't sound funny, but it's meant to be humorous because the season has obviously changed. It's cold. It's not been cold like this. It's not been wet like this. It's not, you know, and I got the alert this morning. I got to bring in all the plants now because there's a freeze warning. It could be 27 degrees. I'm like, wow, how fast things have changed. So I'm not necessarily here to prove I'm right. I'm here to try to convince you. Whether you agree with me or not, and I hope you do by the end of this message, that, that there is a change of season taking place. And the only question is not whether there is a change of season, and you can ask that if you want, but I don't think that's the question. The question is, will you change with it? If God is changing my season, will I change with it? That, that's really the only question. And that's how I ended last week, and we ended with a reflection time, but I'm going to use that as my springboard. So here it goes, point one. When seasons change, it's first the natural, then the spiritual. It's first the natural, and then the spiritual. So when seasons change, and you can see the other three words, what is required? Recognition. You have to recognize that the season has changed. And part of that is knowing that it's first natural, then spiritual. And I'm going get, to get to 1 Corinthians 15, 46. If you just want to put your finger there, if you just want to write this down, I'm going to get there. So first the natural, then the spiritual. Our modern Western mindset usually assumes that it is the spiritual first. As Christians, as believers in the West, we, we typically feel like that it's the spirit first, then we see the results in the natural world, that we make a spiritual decision and then there are natural changes. But that's not how God works. Scripture tells us that what God does in the natural realm tells the story of what he is doing in the spiritual realm. God reveals his plans and his future work first in the natural world. Robert Maywire says it like this, God does in the natural, then he follows with the spiritual. God does in the natural, then he follows in the spiritual. 
In 1 Corinthians 15, 46, Paul explains one of the most consistent divine patterns in Scripture. The spiritual is not first, but the natural. Are you ready for that? The spiritual is not first, but the natural. Afterward, the spiritual. Here's the verse. The spiritual, and this is not in the right translation. Let me, let me open it, because that's why I'm struggling here. I want, I want you to hear it. I, I saved the wrong translation. I'm sorry, because it's not saying it the way I want it said. He says, however, the spiritual is not first, but the natural, then afterward, the spiritual. So I was missing the however part. However, however, it is the spiritual that is first, not the natural. What is Paul saying? Paul was giving us an example. By using the resurrection, he was teaching us a new way of seeing and understanding God's embedded truths in the natural world. When we recognize these truths, we see with his eyes. It all makes sense that the sequence would be first natural, then spiritual, because there was first the natural man, Adam, and then there was the spiritual man, Jesus. We are first born naturally, then we are born again spiritually. That's, that's the pattern. We have to recognize God's pattern. We have to look for what he is doing in natural circumstances and then ask him to reveal to us what it means in the spiritual. There is a natural season change. And so we have to ask God, what does that mean for me in the spirit? That's what I'm asking you. Recognize it. Recognize it naturally. Recognize it spiritually. Recognize that change. Number two. God has changed the season, but your entrance is not automatic. What is required? Obedient action, faith, trust. Yes, God has changed the season, but it doesn't mean that you and I are on a conveyor belt and we just get carried into the season. No, we have to decide. We have to act upon the change of season by faith. We have to act upon what God is doing. God speaks. God directs. God said to the children of Israel, go. And they left Egypt. God said to, or Jesus said to his disciples, go. And they went into all the world. It isn't an automatic thing. When God gives You or I, a directive that that our natural season and our spiritual season has shifted. God doesn't want us tearing or hanging back. God wants us to respond with faith and haste. Back in uh, 1989, the uh, Berlin Wall fell. And shortly after the crumbling of the Berlin Wall, which kind of represented that wall between um, freedom and democracy and those kinds of things and communism, the Soviet Union fell apart. And Russia became open to the gospel. And many of our Church of God pastors and, 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 and Church of God leaders and denominational leaders were going to Russia to preach, and they were having tremendous crusades and filling auditoriums that once was once were were filled with with communist speech and communist propaganda, and and the indoctrination of young minds on universities. Now the gospel was being preached, and people were coming to Jesus Christ by the thousands. One of those ministers that went was Floyd Lahan, and. Brother Lahan told me this story that God had directed him to go into Russia and preach. And as they were um, kind of moving among those former Soviet countries, they, they came to the, I'm trying to think, the border crossing, I call it. And, and the guards were letting no one through. They were letting no one through 
into Russia. They had, they had, they had shut They'd shut the border, and I forgot what country he was leaving and, and, what he was, and where he was entering Russia at. And he knew that God had called him to go there. He knew that God had spoke to him. And all of a sudden, he said, a holy boldness rose up in him. And he looked at the, the, the people in the, in the van with him and some Russian pastors and some Americans and he said, the kingdom of God requires haste. And he grabbed a $50 bill, American money, out of his pocket. And he said, I jumped out of the vehicle and I started walking toward the guard. And they all tried to grab him and get Brother Lahan back into the, in the van. And, and he's a Texan and he's a tall guy. And, 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 and he was just full of the boldness of God. And he said, he walked right up to that guard and he said, we need to cross this border. Here's $50. He said, the guard put the gun down, looked at the vehicle, pointed at it, said, come out of the line and let them through. You can't just sit parked in the line if your season has changed. It's not automatic that you're going to get into it. God gave you a word. God has told you something's going to happen. You have to act on it. You have to respond to it. What is he saying in your heart? What is he telling you about your family, about your job, about your life, about your family? I mean, what is he saying? What is God telling you about your service in the kingdom? What is he speaking to you in prayer? What is changing? Notice that there's been a natural change in the season, and that's signaling something in the spirit. What is he wanting to do? Respond to that with faith and haste. Leonard Ravenhill says it like this, the opportunity of a lifetime must be seized in the lifetime of the opportunity. Don't get frozen in time. Don't get held back in an old season when your new season has changed. That brings me to my second point. God has done his part, but he won't do your part. What is required in this step, Pastor? Cooperation is required. God has opened the door, but he won't make you walk through it. Cooperate with him. Respond to him. Take the baton of this new season, this different or other season, whatever word you prefer. Sometimes people don't like the word new because they, they think somehow it disparages the old. And I've, and I've preached whole messages on this. And some of you that, that haven't been here, let me, just, let me just say it like this. When we use the words old and new, we're not saying the old was bad and the new is better. It's just different. Right? When I was a child, I acted as a child, I behaved as a child, I spoke as a child. Paul said, but when I became a man, I had to put away childish things. Right? You know, when, when, when you're a kid, your parents tell you to pick up your toys. When you're an adult, you got to pick up your toys. you you got to kind of self-govern here a little bit. You, gotta, you know, i got to put my stuff away. I can't just leave my house cluttered. I can't just have everything strewn everywhere. So we got to cooperate with God. He is handing us a baton of a different season or a, or a new season. And we've got to run this leg of the race with faith and patience and endurance the same way we ran the last leg. Whatever God did in the last season or the previous season, that was great. That was wonderful. But there's something different. There's something new. There's something now that he's saying to us that he's looking for us to respond to. Thank you for your enthusiasm. I'm not saying that we do the work. I'm saying that our work is in the response. Our work is in the cooperation. We, we have been yoked together with him. There's our part to this thing, and our part is taking hold, walking through, and going forward. The last point is this. What happens when your season changes and you don't? Your future is forfeited. In these other three points, there was some kind of action that you, you had to take. You had to recognize. You had to obey. You had to cooperate. But here, if you do nothing, 
than whatever God was trying to do, whatever God was wanting to do, whatever God purposed to do in your life, in the future, has been forfeit. I don't know about you, but I don't want to forfeit my future because I'm comfortable in my present. I like now. Listen to me. I like now. I know sometimes when pastors preach these kinds of messages, people think that we love change. No. This is a good season. I like it. I like the flow of it. I like the feel of it. I like my present. I like what I'm doing. I like how I feel when I'm doing it. Right? But if God is saying, look at the natural. There's been a shift. And what I need you to do is I I need you to be listening to what I'm saying. I need you to take action. I need you to, by faith, trust me, I need you to take the baton and cooperate with me. I need you to go into this next season with faith and trust, knowing that I'm doing something. But I also need you to know that if you don't go, you are forfeiting something. Here's what I think he's saying. I think he's saying there's a harvest attached to this next season. That there are souls attached to this next season. As a church, but also individually. God is opening doors for me to talk to people about Jesus individually. God is opening doors for me to speak into into the life of people that, that, that I am meeting that aren't a part of our congregation. I don't want to forfeit a harvest, a future harvest. And it's the same way for you, whether it's your children or, 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 or a family member. God, look around you. What, are, what is God doing? Who are the individuals that God has put in your life that you have influence over, that you can speak to, that you can talk to, that you can, that you can share the gospel with? I believe God is saying, yes, this last season. Guess what it was? It was a teacher. It was a preparer. For the harvest. And you can be comfortable in this learning season, this this comfort season, this, this season of preparation. God blessing you and God doing things. But I need you to go into the harvest. It's ripe. It's ready. It's prepared. Don't wait. It's not four months away. It's right now. Pastor Reuben, if you can come. Don't forfeit this harvest. Your season has changed. Last week I asked you, will you change with it? Today I'm asking you, will you step into it? Knowing that souls are attached Knowing that there's this kingdom, eternal purpose. I know I've talked about the natural, and I talked about a lot. I know I talked about the the spiritual. But but listen, there is also this eternal component. When the natural season signals a spiritual change, and we move into that spiritual season, this different kind of season, it has an eternal reward. An eternal benefit. So if we want to receive those benefits or if we want to receive those blessings. Then we have to leave the familiar. We have to leave the comfort of the present. 
and say, God, I'm, I'm going into the harvest field. I'm, I'm going into my next season. I'm not going to forfeit the souls. I'm not going to forfeit the blessings. I'm not going to forfeit the benefits. I'm not going to forfeit because right here, something significant is going to take place. So I want to ask you, all over this building, I want you just to begin to reflect. I want you just to begin to pray. God, what are you saying to me? What are you saying to me in this message? What is the different? What is the the baton? What is the what is the season? What is the change? What is the the shift? Where is the door? The opening. Hand me the baton. I'll go through it. Here's why I'm asking you to to, to, to do those kinds of questions. Because I can't get away from this. I believe some of you, whether it's your children, their adult children, or it's your grandchildren, they're not believers. They're not following Christ right now. Maybe you brought them up in church, and they've kind of walked away from that. I, I sense a recovery in this season. And that word change, when it's God changes the seasons, is the sense of recovery. That God is looking to recover his lost children. They're your children. They're your grandchildren. They're, they're your family. They're connected to you. God's looking to recover the prodigals of this house, of this church. And I know I come back to this from time to time in different seasons, but I still feel like there are adults who were children in this church that they aren't currently serving God, but God is going to bring them back home. Just like the prodigal son, they're going to come to themselves and they're going to come to the realization that in the Father's house, there's bread enough and to spare. That in God's house, there are good things happening and good things taking place. So I'm asking you to do that and then I'm going to ask you to make a step here and when I do the praise team, the rest of the praise team, you guys can come because we're going to sing and we're going to worship. I'm going to ask you to put that person in your hand. Put that family member in your hand. Put those grandchildren in your hand. And I'm going to ask you to bring them before the altar. And I want you to say to God, God, I'm not forfeiting the harvest of these souls. If this is the season that you're going to redeem and recover, then I am going to be your partner. I'm going to cooperate with what you're doing in this season for the redemption of my family. And I want you to get out of your seat. I want you to take action on it. I want you to show God today that you're serious. So, Father, right now as we prepare, if you want to stand, you can stand. You can worship if you're not coming. You can pray for those that come. But we need to stand to get ready to move. Father, right now in the name of Jesus. I'm bringing these family members to you. I will not forfeit them. I will not forfeit them. I will not forfeit them. Would you bring them to the altar right now as we worship and sing? Hallelujah. Your name is the highest. Your name is the greatest. Your name stands above them all. All thrones and dominions, all powers and positions, your name stands above them all. Sing it again. Cause your name is the highest, your name is the greatest, your name stands above them all. And all thrones. Positions, all powers and positions, your name stands above them all, and the angels.
stands above them all. All thrones, and all thrones, and dominions, all powers, and positions, your name. It stands above them all, and the angels cry. prodigal? Is there somebody that you're friends with? Is there somebody you're connected with? Or did somebody's name drop into your heart? Would you take that name in your hand? When I pray this way, I, I, I just pray generically because we've not been part of North Elliott. But for four years, so I don't have specific names, but I do have a generation. I believe those of my generation, maybe a, a little younger, maybe a little older. God is trying to draw them back to his house. God is trying to bring people back to himself. Because the way they're doing life, it isn't working God's wanting to bring healing and salvation to them. Would you just take those names, and you don't, you don't have to come forward, but would you just take those names and just hold them in your hand as we just kind of pray collectively for a few moments? Father, we bring the prodigal sons and daughters. and For me, God, I pray for my generation. that's missing and absent from this house whose children and grandchildren are absent from this house God I pray right now that you arrest them wherever they are with awareness rest them with awareness God right now you don't have to be in a pig pen to realize that your life needs to change. Holy Spirit, go where they are and impress upon them your hope, your conviction for them and their families for the future. Right where they are, one by one. I pray they can get saved right there. They can come back to you right there. They can come back to church and tell us, I got, I got saved in my home on October 29th. The Holy Spirit came in my room and the Holy Spirit came in my house and something happened. And not only did He save me, He changed my season. He, he transformed my, my future. I believe we can hear that, church. I believe we can hear that. If you're of a younger generation and you don't know any names, then grab that generation. If you're in your 30s and 40s, grab your generation and pray. But let's just seek Him for a little bit. You guys go ahead and, 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 and sing and worship. Lead us. Lead us.
Hallelujah. Let's, let's put a capstone on this today. You are, you were, you will be forever. Your kingdom is rising. There will be no end. Father, all of the prayers that we've prayed and all the names that we've named, we place them in your hand. Do the work of salvation. Bring them in. We'll carry the message. We'll take the gospel. We'll pray the prayers. But only you can save them. And only you can bring them in. Father, today, we recognize that something different is happening. We just walk into that. We trust this uncertain season, this unknown elements of it, to a certain and a known God. We pray all of these things in the name of your Son, Jesus. Amen and amen. As you prepare to to leave today, please remember the Fall Palooza. Uh, if you're coming to serve, if you can wear a serve team shirt, and I know it's cold, if you got to bundle up, whatever, but if you have a serve team shirt, I've got about two or three uh, extras I'll bring with me tonight if somebody comes and you want to have a serve team shirt on. We look forward to seeing you. Be blessed today, and uh, let's just keep on praying for tonight's event. Amen.